Good morning. Welcome to Chapel by the Sea. It's so good to have a few of you here. And to all you men out there, happy Father's Day. So we can celebrate today all the good men in the world, our fathers and our grandfathers, the men who coached us, who taught us, who our employers, all the men who have nurtured us and cared for us and challenged us. We give thanks for all the good men of the world. So happy Father's Day. Here at the chapel, we're blessed with a lot of good men, and, uh, and so I'm thankful for all of you today. Now, today we are enjoying our soft opening. So all of you out in TV land, we have a few folks here today, our board members and a few folks who have signed up to be ushers when we open for reels next week on June the 28th. And so you're going to see some changes. Only our front doors are open. We have offering boxes installed as you exit to the left of each of our entry doors, okay? We have every other pew roped off, and that means that maybe your favorite pew is roped off and and maybe you can you can forgive us for that so that we can social distance from one another um, as we're watching the numbers go up and up and up here in Pinellas County as well as in Florida we are taking another step and in asking you not to sing because singing is one of the most one of the riskiest things you can do with an airborne illness and so we have one singer and we'll sing from our hearts but maybe not from our lips today um, and just a word about the measures that we've taken to keep people safe during this pandemic. For some of you, it's way too much. For others of you, it's not nearly enough, and you're probably not here and not planning to come for a while. And so what we're trying to do is strike a balance. And so my hope and my prayer is that we can be patient with each other as we all kind of navigate this new situation together. So that's what we have to do to be in community with each other. We kind of give and take a little bit. And even though some of the decisions may not be the decisions you would have made, that's, that's what we're doing right now until, you know, until the board can come together and find consensus around a new practice. So in the meantime, we do have a few things uh, being offered by way of Zoom online. We have our comparative religion course taught by Joe Cregan Sundays at 9 o'clock as well as Wednesdays at 6.30. And we have Meditation Mondays continuing at 6.30 with Nikki Walton. And new this week, we are launching a pilot project we're calling Sermon-Based Small Groups. And so the idea is that you either attend church or watch the service online, and then you come together with a small group for six weeks and you explore, you go a little bit deeper into the scripture text, a little bit deeper into some of the, uh, the concepts that I bring up in the sermon. Um, and so this week, we're launching a group for women only. It'll be Tuesdays at 10 a.m. via Zoom. The facilitators are Linda Silram and Allison Norse Miller. And then a little later in the summer, we're launching a co-ed group that will be facilitated by Reverend Dr. Ch uh, Chuck Roost. And so you can sign up for those online, sermon-based small groups. Now today we continue the series I'm calling uh, The Summer Between, I think you saw the beautiful artwork by our office manager, Kristen Mann, The Summer Between Adventures in Liminality. And liminality is basically threshold. It's between one thing and another. William Blake wrote, in the universe there are things that are known and things that are unknown and in between them there are doors. And so we're living in a threshold between what was and what is yet to come. And it can be disorienting and confusing, but scriptures can help us walk through that. Today we explore the story of Abraham and Sarah and the liminal space that they found themselves in as they were following God. And so let us worship together as we too seek to follow God together. Sure of love. 
was in crisis, help us know that our strength's in heaven above. We ask for healing in our world over this saddening night. Comfort all who I forgot is that following the service today we will have a training for ushers um, I believe it's going to be in our chapel hall so make haste and go to chapel hall for our usher training following the service hear our call to worship there will be many songs to sing aloud together O Lord until that day comes we lift songs and prayers from our hearts meet us in our worship Grant us strength and courage to carry forth the faith of our forefathers, offering our thanks and praise for your faithfulness throughout all generations. Amen. Fathers was almighty hand leads forth in beauty or the story of shining worlds in splendor through the skies or grateful songs before thy throne arise. From wars alarms, from deadly pestilence, be thy strong arm, our ever sure defense, thy true thy people on their toilsome way. Lead us from night to a never-ending day. Fill our eyes with love and grace divine. And God hear Let us pray. <clears throat> we praise you for creating this world in all beauty, for redeeming the world through Christ our Lord, and for sending us the gift of your Spirit to encourage, instruct, and sustain us. We long for your Spirit to work among us now, to inspire our praise, to challenge us with your truth, and to equip us for service in your world. Amen. 
Now, as we come to the time in our worship where we give back to God a portion of what God has blessed us with, I want to thank you for your generosity in supporting the chapel through this season. In this season of social distancing, I, I confess I was worried. I was worried that our giving would kind of plummet, but, but you have been faithful. You surprised me, and for that, I am a little embarrassed, but I hope you'll forgive me. You have been faithful and good stewards of this blessing of Chapel by the Sea. Um, today, as we give our gifts, uh, there are still four ways to give. Um, you can give today in the offering boxes to the left of your exit doors. Uh, you can give by mail. You can drop off your gift to the church. You can give online, chapelbythesea.net, on our give page. You can also sponsor, I don't know if you saw this yet, you can sponsor some of the items that have been required for our reopening, like the pew ropes and like the hand sanitizer I shot you with this morning. So you can sponsor some of those reopening items. You can also text GIVE to the number on your screen or in your bulletin. And you can sign up for automatic giving the form is on the give page on our website. So may God bless you and may God bless the gifts that you will give. As the wind swung through the trees, as the stirring of the breeze, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the heart made strangely warm, as the voice within the storm, so it is with the Spirit of God. Never see, never know where this wind has blown, bringing life, bringing power to the world. As the dancing tongues of fire, as the sword more steep desire, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the rainbow after rain, as the hope that's born again, so it is with the Spirit of God. Green in the spring, as a kite on a string, so it is with the spirit of God, making worlds that I know, making peace come true, bringing gifts. Let us pray. 
generous God, you have given us life, a place to live in and people to live with. Open our eyes to each other and, tell, and to all our brothers and sisters, especially the poor, the oppressed, the alienated. Make us humble enough to help and comfort them so that your love and the justice and peace may come to them. Consecrate us and our gifts to you and to the service of others through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I invite you to pray for Herb McLaughlin, who is recovering at home from surgery. Will you pray with me? O oh God, our Father, you have been faithful through all generations. <clears throat> you have carried our forebears through challenges untold and brought us, your people, to this very moment. How can we express our thanks? How can we offer anything comparable to the goodness you have shown to us? Open our eyes to see the bounty you have set before us, the immeasurable blessings each day holds, the grace that sustains, the mercy that restores, the love that defines who we are as beloved sons and daughters. Forgive us when we fail to extend your compassion all around, when we look at others and fail to see them as your sons and your daughters, as our brothers and our sisters. Grant us the ability to walk humbly with you. Break us free from the anger that has taken up residence in our hearts, making us cynical, jaded, failing to place our hope and our trust in you. Soften our hearts, O Lord, that your grace and joy might enter in and overflow to the world all around. Meet us, our Father, in the silence that we now offer. And with our hearts, but maybe not our lips, we offer the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let me take this opportunity just to say a word about Kylie and Ron and our other musicians. They have worked really hard to put some music together for us while we were worshiping, uh, pre-recorded worship services. They, they used an app. They figured out how to use an app to put some music together. Ron has been working diligently to bring them together on Zoom, and, and, uh, and they're doing some different things with that. And so I'm so thankful for our church musicians, Kylie and Ron, and, and all the others for their faithful service to our church during this season. Now, yeah. You know, that's one thing we can do. We can clap. All right. Our scripture lesson today are selected verses from Genesis chapter 17 and chapter 18. Hear now the word of the Lord. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful And I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God." Now, skipping ahead to verse 15. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Can Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? Now, skipping ahead to chapter 18, verse 11. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, (laughs) After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Thanks be to God for the reading of God's word. My sermon starts now, doesn't it? Nobody likes to wait, do we? We have to wait on so many things, though. Life kind of forces us to wait. We wait at red lights. We wait at the doctor's. I mean, there's a whole room dedicated to waiting at the doctor's office, right? And then there's waiting in line. Nothing is worse than waiting in line. But I've discovered a new trick recently. When you're waiting in line, all you have to do is start coughing uncontrollably. You just say, oh, no worries, I've been tested for COVID. Results should be back any day now. No, no, No problem at all. Nobody likes to wait. Nor did Abraham and Sarah. Our, our, our hero and our heroine of the story today. Abraham and Sarah. Now, when we first meet Abraham and Sarah, it's in Genesis chapter 12. Now, I didn't read you the whole expansive story of Abraham and Sarah. I encourage you to go home and do that. But it begins with Genesis chapter 12, where we first meet Abraham and Sarah. Abraham, at that time, is 75 years old. Sarah is about 10 years younger, at 65 years old. And God says to Abraham and Sarah, I want you to be a great nation. Follow me to the land that I will show you. And they kind of uh, are like, okay, whatever, God. 
75 and 65, whatever you say. And so Abraham and Sarah, they pack up all of their belongings, all of their possessions, and they had slaves and all kinds of properties and animals, and they, they moved the whole lot to the land that God would show them. Now, fast forward a few years and a few chapters later. Now we're in Genesis chapter 15. And Abraham and Sarah and all of their people and all of their animals, they are now in the land that God showed them, just as God promised. But no children. A great nation had yet to be born to Abraham and Sarah, and Abraham gets frustrated. And he says to God, you can kind of imagine him kind of shaking his fist up at heaven. You said I would have an heir, and I have no heir yet. No children have you given me, God. And God said to Abram, come outside, step outside your tent. And so Abraham stepped outside, and God said, now count the stars in the sky if you can. Your heirs, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. That's chapter 15. Now, by chapter 16, they're even older. By chapter 16, Abraham is 86. Sarah is about 76 years old. And they're tired of waiting. Wouldn't you be? 76 years old? Still haven't had the baby that God promised? 76 years old. And so Sarah decides to take matters into her own hands. And so she offers to Abraham one of her slaves named Hagar. Here, Abraham, have this slave so we can have an heir by her. And Abraham, maybe not being quite the man of valor that we want our our hero to be, he says, okay, that sounds like a great idea. And so even without the help of a little blue pill at 86, Abraham and and Hagar have a son. His name is Ishmael. And it is widely thought that Ishmael is the father of the Arab nation, the father, forefather of the prophet Muhammad. It is widely believed that because Sarah took matters and Abraham took matters into their own hands that the conflict in the Middle East that we've had for centuries was a result of this decision to not trust God and to take matters into their own hands. But we're not much better, are we? When we want something, we want it now. I want it now. Delayed gratification is not something that we're good at as a culture, is it? There's an old study, I think it's from 1970. It's called the Stamford Marshmallow Experiment. You may know about this from your sociology class way back. Researchers took kids and they set them individually in a room without any distractions, and they allowed the kids to choose a snack. I think one of those snacks must have been a marshmallow, right? And they told the kids, you can have one marshmallow now. Or, if you wait 15 minutes, you can have two marshmallows. So the researcher left the room. There's videos of of kids kind of going crazy, doing whatever they can to keep their eyes off the single marshmallow, off the temptation that's on the table. And the researchers discovered, as they followed the kids later on into life, that the kids who could wait the 15 minutes for two marshmallows would have better life results, including better SAT scores, (laughs) better um, academic achievement, lower BMI, body mass index. Now we know why Rhonda can't wait for two marshmallows. I gotta have my marshmallow now. (laughs) Delayed gratification, not our forte. Just this week, as we've been, you know, thinking about this pandemic and been locked down for several weeks now and, and, and social distancing and masks and all the things, right? And then those, re- those are relaxed and we're able to go out into society and we're still told to keep social distance and wear our masks, right? When we go out, CDC is telling us these things. But just this week, Pinellas County released a picture that was taken last Saturday in St. Pete. Have you seen it? It's of a packed bar doesn't look like there's great circulation, and it is jam-packed. Not a mask in sight, shoulder to shoulder dancing and drinking, and th- it looked like a great party. I just hope they're having fun 14 days from now. We want our party. We want it now. We want our nightlife, and we want it now. Delayed gratification 
isn't something most of us are real good at. So what do we do when we find ourselves between want? We want a vaccine, right? What do we do between want and fulfillment? How do we live our lives between what we want and what is yet to be? What do we do with that? Well, I figure we have two choices. First of all, we can take the pessimistic view. We can become jaded and cynical. As the story unfolds in in the book of Genesis about Abraham and Sarah, we kind of fast forward now to chapter 17 where we picked up our reading for today. And do you remember how old Abram was in this story? 99 years old and Sarah was 90. And God said, I'm going to give you a kid. And they were like, good one, God. They both laughed, didn't they? Was their laughter joyful laughter? To me, it appears to be cynical laughter, jaded laughter, the kind of laughter you offer when you hear something that's unbelievable, ridiculous. (laughs) Yeah, right, God. I'm 99, Sarah's 90. We're going to have a kid now? Whatever. And so that's the, that's the posture that Abraham and Sarah take in this chapter, in chapter 17. Now, it's been 25 years since the Lord first told them that they would have an heir. And probably they wanted children some 40 years before that. So total 70, probably about 70 years that they've wanted children. So yeah, they were a little cynical. Could you blame them? You know the recipe for cynicism, right? You take one part, disappointment. And one part, hopelessness, two parts, anger, a dash of bitterness, you sprinkle a little contempt on top, and you bake it for a lifetime. That's the recipe for cynicism. (laughs) That's where we find Abraham and Sarah in this passage. They're laughing at God, not with God, at God. But then... Fast forward to chapter 21. Let's see what happens. And now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. And Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. God was true to God's promise. You see, we can let our disappointments in life overtake us. We can yield ourselves to them. We can give in to them, becoming jaded, becoming cynical. But God is true to God's promises. This week I was cleaning out a closet. I know, don't freak out. I was cleaning out a closet in my house and I found some old Photo, photo albums and scrapbooks, right? So I was looking through an old scrapbook I made my senior year of high school. That was a while back. So I was going through it. My 13-year-old was looking at it with me and having a lot of fun looking at mom's fashion statements from back then. And we turned the page, and there was a, a couple of pages dedicated to a church camp I had gone to as a senior in high school. And he looked at me, he, he said, Mom, you were religious even back then? <laughs> I said, oh, I guess so, yeah, I guess, I guess I was. He said, why? Why are you so religious now? And why were you back then? And I said, well, it's a good question. I said, I think it's because I believe that people need hope. I believe that people need hope. I need hope. I, I imagine you might need some hope. That's why you're here, and that's maybe why you're watching on YouTube. You need, a little, you need a little hope. That's why I'm a person of faith, because I need hope that there's something more than, than, than the bitter reality that we find ourselves as we go through life, the disappointments, the, the lost dreams, the faded plans. We need something to give us a little hope for the future. And we have that choice, don't we? Just because we embrace faith and just because we embrace hope doesn't mean we're being idealist. It doesn't mean we don't know what reality is. To embrace hope doesn't mean that we have our head in the sand and pretending things aren't 
perfect, right? That we pretend everything's hunky-dory. Well, maybe not. Maybe everything isn't hunky-dory, but that doesn't keep me from having hope. The scriptures teach us over and over that God is true to God's promises. So let me ask you, people of faith, what are you waiting on? You're waiting on a vaccine? (laughs) Maybe there's more that you're waiting on. Maybe the restoration of a of a relationship, maybe a job, or maybe the stock market to go up. Maybe you're waiting on that trip to resume after it was canceled. Maybe you're waiting on health or a good report from the doctor. Maybe you're waiting on some healing. What are you waiting on? It's okay to wait on the promise to be fulfilled, but know this, my friends. God is with you in the waiting. Amen. now receive this word of benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance to you and give you peace. Amen. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by